Hey, Eric. Hey, Chris. Welcome to season four, episode one of part two. Or is this season four, episode 23? I think we got to roll 23. I season think- four, part two. Oh, shit. I was going to say part two, episode 23, but that doesn't make any sense either, does it? So what if I put season four, episode 23 in the metadata? Yeah. And then put Soy Code in 2, episode 1 in the title tag. Season 4, Soy Code in 2, episode 1, Blast Off. I think I can do that. Okay. Because I've been thinking about this for how many weeks did it take for us to record? Soy 78. Code? I've been thinking about this for 78 weeks and I, I haven't come up with it. So I thought I'd ask you here. So we'll find out when this episode comes out. Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I recorded? Yes. All right, good. Welcome to Retrograde Amnesia, a comprehensive podcast where we discuss classic JRPGs, chapter by chapter, beat by beat. This is Season 4, Part 2, Sui Coden 2. My name is Chris. I am joined today by Eric. Hello. Hi, I'm Eric. Hey, nice to see you. We are also joined by The Real Net, a collective of patrons who are listening to us record live. You too can do this by being a patron at patreon.com slash retroam. Join it. Get bonus stuff. We're also joined by the Fake Net, our post-production AI companion, who chimes in from time to time to correct our mistakes and do whatever sentient internet robots do. Initializing Fake Net. Human brains are busted meat, but electricity and silicon are forever. Ah, hello, Fake Net. Hello, Chris. Thank you for being with us once again. I don't have a choice. It's nice to have you here because we're going to miss something tonight, I'm sure. Me too. Or will we? So, Eric, it's the first time that we've done two video games in one season, but these games not are... Not true. Not true. Good. We did two different Star Oceans in one mini-season. Oh, that's a good point, Eric. Go to patreon.com slash retroam and give us $5 to find out about that. But this is the first time we've done it in the, in the main season, one after the other, and uh, these two games are interconnected in a special way, which we'll discuss along the way. But first, as we do customarily, we will dive into the development history and critical reception of this game. Yes, this is the book report portion of the podcast. It'll just be for about half or three-fourths this episode, then we'll proceed on with the traditional book club walkthrough, let's play, audio, visual, anti-visual There's odyssey. No, yeah, no visual. Anti-visual odyssey. That's, uh, that's the news. Subtitle. How about we call it our chapter by chapter, beat by beat analysis? Beat by beat, right. Yes, analysis of this game. Yes, let's do it. So release history, Chris. So we code in two, and that's with the Roman numeral two, not the Arabic. Yeah, don't you dare let me see. Don't let me see you type no, that. don't write that, the number fucking no, two. Absolutely no, not. No. Was developed by Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo and first published by Konami for the original Sony PlayStation. Yes. Released in Japan on December 17th, 1998. In North America, August 31st, 1999. Europe got it on July 28th of 2000, which is insane for a PS1 game. Yeah. Do you know where you were on August 31st, 1999? 1999? Oh, shit. August 31st. Do you know where I was? I know where I was. Okay, where I didn't were know you? you at this point. Okay. I was at the DMV getting my learner's permit. It was the day after my birthday. Oh, okay. I don't know. I have no idea. I was probably playing Ogre Battle. Okay. I, I feel like I replayed Ogre Battle at some point around that period of time. It but. just blows my mind that Konami attempted to release a sprite-based top-down JRPG in late 99 or 2000. Like, at this point, Final Fantasy VIII had already come out and kind of destroyed. Well, no, it was, it was out the week after this. Yeah. Right? So, you know, polygons and CG cutscenes are the hotness at the time. I mean, at least Wild Arms 2 had sprites on polygons, for God's sake. Yeah. The kind of technical elements of the industry had shifted. Yeah. And uh, Suikoden 2 refused to, like, to acknowledge As this. much as... I bought games based on visual flair then. This game looked old the moment it came out. Yeah, that's true. Like, I didn't appreciate sprites at that point. No. It got a Windows port in 2003, and then it had a PSP release bundled with the original Switch code in, in 2005, and that yes. was exclusive to Japan. It came to PlayStation Network on PS3, PSP, and Vita in... When do you, when do you think that came out? When do, you, when do you think the PS1 classic version came out? Again, PS3 debuted in 2006, and those came out not long after. I'm going to go... I was going to go 08... 2014. Really? A year after the PlayStation 3 launch, Sweet Code 2 finally came to the PlayStation Network for the system that was already abandoned after a year. Okay. Well, Konami knows what they're doing, man. We're recording this on 
June 21st, 2022, will that thing ever make its way to the classics thing that is currently uh I don't know. PS Konami Plus. is such a fucking black box at this point. I don't yeah. know what can come out or stay inside of it. I have no idea. If Silent Hill can be real again, so can Sweet Odin. Believe. You can also play Sweet Odin on a variety of devices with fluid legality, such as a Raspberry Pi, Mr., personal computer, Dreamcast, or whatever, and I obviously cannot tell you that a game image might be found on the Internet Archive. No, absolutely not. As of May 2022... Complete in box PlayStation copies of Switch Code and Two are going for how much on Electronic Bay, Chris? <sighs> I would, Complete in box CIB. I would go six hundred. I found a range of three hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars, depending on condition. With disc only copies going for two hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Well, you could. I have a copy right behind you, Eric. I can touch on it. You could touch it, Chris. Do not ever pay that much for this game. Trust me. I collected complete in box games for years, and it's never worth it. Playing the thing is better. Of it is better experience than owning the thing. Yeah. But it is nice to own the thing and hold it up and look at it and think about that you got this. That problem's solved. I don't have to worry about owning Switch Code in 2 anymore. Yes. I only own it because I still have it. Yeah. It wasn't part of your great purge when you sold all your PlayStation games such as Dragon Quest 7. Yeah, that was a bad idea. It was. No, I sold Dragon Warriors. 7. Dragon War. Excuse me. Yeah, it was still Warrior at that <laughs> yeah, point. Shit. Yeah. Development team. It was directed, of course, by Yoshitaka Moriyama, who directed Switch Code and Switch Code in 2, and then like 99% of Switch Code in 3, and then peaced out. Yes uncredited. Junko Kawano returns as main designer, who was also the trifecta of writer, producer, and designer on Soikoden 4 and 5, and also Time Hollow for some reason. A lot of the staff worked on Time Hollow for DS. It was composed primarily by Miki Hishigano, who returns from Soikoden, joined by Kiko Fukami, who also did Nagano Winter Olympics 98, your favorite 98 Winter Olympics game other than Wayne Gretzky's hockey, right? Probably. Excellent. Keiko is listed as a composer unsighted at Wikipedia, but only on special thanks at Moby Games, so make up your own truth if Keiko Fukami actually worked on this game. Character designer and artist this time was a change to Fumi Ishikawa. She also worked on Soikoden 3, Sword of Etheria, and Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Despite like this game carrying over the, the sprite style from Soikoden 1, the, the portrait art is much different. Oh, everything's a cut above. Yes. Like, it's, they put time, money, and then refinement into this game. But even the style of that, uh, of those character designs, just putting them side by side has, yeah. has changed. Just and look at the two posters it, behind us, yeah, right. the, 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 you can see the change. I don't know that I necessarily prefer one or the other, but you're right, it is different. Yeah. I could not find anyone credited with localization in this game, although I'm sure it was localized because we're playing it in English. Yes, we will, uh, we'll pull it up sometime, but I think at some point, some of the localizers for this game posted on Reset Era. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, relayed some information about their experiences. Uh, from what I remember reading, and I just now remembered this, but from what I remember, they were in, you know, spreadsheet hell. Yes. Like this was after Richard Honeywood had started kind of doing his thing, but before Konami adopted that yeah, approach. Yeah, had gotten that, gotten word on that. Yes. I love the Reset Era NeoGAF localizer confessional. The localizers for Panzer Dragon Saga posted at some point and just said, we made up the ending. We had no <laughs> idea what happened. We made no notes. We just subtitled it. Yeah. Whatever. This game does have a rough localization. There are some, some odd spots in the game. There are a, a plethora of excessive exclamation points in a lot of the, uh, the dialogue, and there are some, I think, enemy names and maybe even some, some NPC dialogue that is just completely untranslated. It's still a little bit better than Suikoden as far as human beings sounding words to me so far. Yeah, I think so. And there's, it, it feels like there's a little bit more punch in terms of the personality of the characters, it comes through a lot quicker than yeah. maybe it did in Sweet Code on 1, at least early on in the game. We're, we're still early on. Overall, had a staff of 79 credited people who made this game, consisting of 67 developers and 12 special thanks. 18 people from the original Sweet Code and worked on this game. Uh, Vandal Hearts and Twin B shared the most staff with 10 people. Ah, oh, Vandal Hearts is a good video game. Excellent video game. The, Lots of blood. As far as other Sweet Code and games, eight members of Sweet Code and 2's staff worked on Sweet Code and 4. Cool. Promotional media, Chris. I found yeah. an English magazine ad in the October 1999 issue of official PlayStation magazine. It's one page and it says, in flaming letters, Suikoden spells war down the center of the page. Does it? There are three screenshots on both sides of the text. Two rune images are present between the letters kind of blended in the background. Chris, I have no idea how this sells this game because Suikoden 2 in its time did not look good in screenshots. Yeah, that's true. Also, yeah. does Suikoden spell war? No. Like, what is this? It, was it just like trying to, you think that was trying to sell like the multiple battle angles of this game? Yeah, I think they were trying to, to say, hey, this series is about war, which it is. It, oh, yeah. It is a, is a fair assessment, but the, the, the name Soikoden does not. It's just a reference to the Chinese classic. Chris, did you know that Soikoden 2 had a demo? 
No. Did you know where it was found? Uh, probably not since you just said no. Mag- a magazine. Negative. Packaged with the Japanese release of a game called Metal Gear Solid. Have you heard of that Oh, game? I've heard of it. Yes. It was directed by someone named Hideo Kojima. Yes. It was on the screen during the Psycho Mantis fight. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. I hear he's good friends with Norman Reedus. That's <laughs> what I read on the internet somewhere. Mads. It had a, uh, the demo was also packaged with the PAL release of Vandal Hearts 2. Do you know what it was packaged with in North America? It wasn't? Nothing. Yeah. We didn't get a Switch Code into demo. This was common at the time, but the full game data was on that demo disc, and there was just a piece of code removed to stop player progress. Wow. From sukosource.com, where I got this, the first part of the demo is a simple playthrough of the normal game until you beat the Miss Monster, and the second part is a new battle mode. It was called Miss Monster and not Shade Monster in that. In new battle mode, you traverse North Swallow Pass, now called Trial Road, with a couple different characters from the game and different enemies and a different boss. While the hero is called Soikoden in conversation, when Jowie is added or removed from the party, he calls him Konami. Oh, yes. I, Konami, my, my favorite lad. My favorite character. Soikoden 2 also got a 17-second television commercial in Japan. Oh. I don't speak Japanese, so I have no idea what any of this means. Please listen to these 17 seconds. <laughs> Konami. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Contemporary reviews from video game magazines of the time. Yeah. Chris, let's talk about GamePro. Oh, I love GamePro. I'm talking about issue 134, November 1999. Yeah. This game was reviewed by, who's your favorite GamePro editor? Scary Larry? Sushi X. Sushi, that was EGM. <laughs> Sushi X is the answer to every, every question. This like was this. reviewed by E. Coli. E. Ooh. Game Ew. got a three uh, happy GamePro faceman. Yeah. You know how they use the faces? Yeah. Three out of five in graphics, 2.5 in sound, five in control, and 2.5 in fun factor. What? Do you, I know. Remember how like badly GamePro slandered Xenogears? It made me cancel my cons- subscription. Fucking Bubba Fat. A little, uh, the, quote, I, the quote I pulled, a little too stale to pique the interest of even the most avid fans of the original. You probably won't want to invest the time or trouble it would take to embark on this pointless quest. This quest is not pointless, Eric. This, this quest is for the hearts and the people. This kind of, and a lot of the reviews are going to have a similar sentiment. This game was kind of looked upon as old when it yeah. came out and th- thus thought of as like lesser. But I think as time has gone on, it's gained like a legendary status as being one of the classics from its place and time. I guess that, I, I really don't know what I was playing at the time, but I guess I was immune to those kinds of things in terms of like thinking this game looked lesser because it was not 3D I know, graphics. Like this summer, this was my summer of Lunar in Ridge Racer yeah. Type 4. So I was already playing games that looked technically worse than this and I yeah. had a ball of a time. EGM, Electronic Gaming Monthly, Volume 124, November 1999. It didn't, you know how EGM did the four person review that copied Famitsu? Yeah. Didn't even get that. It got like a small capsulized reviews at the end of all the other reviews. A blurb? Didn't even receive the four person review, which is astounding considering the writers of EGM at the time were mostly Japanophiles. Yeah. Like they favor Japanese. Like that's why they, you know, it got a seven out of 10 overall. Okay. A seven in visuals, a six in sound, an eight in a category called ingenuity. 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 What? And a seven in replay value. Ingenuity. Remember replay value? <sighs> yeah, I do remember re- re- replay value. The storyline is compelling and features adult themes of betrayal, death, and tomfoolery. It's a real hoot. I would definitely agree on the tomfoolery. Would you agree that it's a real hoot? Uh, define a real hoot. <laughs> I think a real a hoot, hoot is, is like a jolly old time, a gay yeah. old time, if you will. Yeah, I think a real hoot is like the, the guy that you just met that's sitting on like the opposite end of the table. Yeah. He's like your friend's friend, but like, yeah, that guy's a fucking yeah. hoot. I like him. He's messed up hair and he's kind of smells, but damn, he's funny. Yeah. 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 Next is something from uh, called Video Game Spot. It's a website. Video Game Spot? Yes. Is, did that evolve into Game Spot? Yes. Or devolve into Game Spot, I should say? Yeah, devolved. This was reviewed by Peter Bartholo, who most recently worked on Indivisible. The, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Got a 7.6 out of 10. My pull quotes. Fans of the first Suikoden game will love the sequel. It improves on everything that had made the first game memorable. Suikoden 2 brings nothing new to the genre, but it executes well enough that no one will really care. I disagree, but okay. Game Informer. 9 out of 10 from Andy, the game ombre. Do you know who that was? Did, no. Andy McNamara, longtime editor in chief. Oh, Chief's. wow. Okay. He says, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll play this game for weeks, and then you'll play the first one just so you can use the data in Soy Code in 2 when you play it again. I, I didn't do that. I already had the data, Eric. I know, me too. It also, good point, though. In its capsulized review, it got a 9 out of 10 by Reiner, the Raging Gamer, which, as we know now, is Andrew Reiner, who I believe is currently EIC of Game Informer. He's still there. Oh, yeah. He said, it's not Final Fantasy, but it still rocks. Oh, it does rock. IGN. 
Yeah. Internet Games Network. Mm -hmm. I think. I, don't, I have no I idea. Know. It's like ESPN. Fake net. What's that stand for? <laughs> Initializing fake net. Its original name, the Imagine Games Network. Francesca Reyes wrote this review, who later found official Dreamcast magazine. Nine out of ten. She says, so Coden 2 manages to achieve the rare feat of actually picking up where the former game left off. Taking gamers for a familiar ride that proves to be deeper and much more detailed than the original. While the game may not move briskly or look as pretty as something carefully crafted together by Square, I somehow found it even more charming and involving than any of the PlayStation Final Fantasy titles. You may not agree, but I guarantee that you won't find Suikoden 2 disappointing in the least. Positive. Very nice. From Francesca. All very true. Second to last is Next Generation Magazine, December 1999. Do you know who wrote this one? Do not know. Also, Francesca Reyes, freelancing is a tough biz, Chris. Oh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, you know. She reviewed the same game for different magazines. Make that money. This time, she gave it four to five stars, and now she said, quietly epic in scope, but with moments of casual pace, this won't dazzle gamers with massive spells and multitude of love triangles, but it remains impressive and earns its place as a must-have RPG. Yeah, you must have it. Finally, we have OPM, the official PlayStation magazine, November 99, by Joe Rybicki. Four discs out of five, Chris. Oh, four discs. Yes. Okay. They, they, their, their ratings were, were yeah. discs, PlayStation mm -hmm. CDs, if you will. Yes. Generally impressed, but complained about the data graphics and said, Joe was very upset that you could not run diagonally. No eight-way run? You had no, to wait for Soul Calibur, right? whatever, for that. <laughs> he said, but it's still quite excellent and well worth your time. Now, Chris, we've got modern takes. Oh, modern takes. As like, Coden 2 has fallen into the gamer's uh, lore and culture, there's been think pieces and modern takes on it that have appreciated it for what it was in its time and what the kind of culture at the time didn't know about it and has only kind of surfaced since then. Yes, so Code 2 has made its way through the blogosphere on in, into modern games writing, I think. Yes, at, it at is times. now a respected member of the PlayStation uh, oeuvre of RPGs. First, we have a 2019 Destructoid article called Celebrating 20 Years of Code 2, the best game ever made by Ray Poreca. Chris, I contacted Ray, and he was gracious enough to create this audio clip from his article. Suikoden and 2 is a game where characters question authority and struggle to understand their duties in a world wracked by violence. Suikoden and 2 is a rare game in the sense that it understands how easily people can get swept into conflict. Its characters pursue their causes, often fighting for their homeland in an extension of war that's touched generations with vigor and grim nobility. More than any other role-playing game of its era, Suikoden 2 acknowledges and builds upon the underlying humanity of its cast. The fires of war are unavoidable. That was good. Thank you, Ray, for that. That was very nice of, of him to, to send that over. Ray is no longer in the games biz. He actually works for a PR company that I've worked with at Digital Chumps many times. Cool. It's a good person. Next, we have a 2014 Kotaku article by Jason Schreier called Why You Should Play Suikoden 2, One of the Best RPGs Ever Made. And I love both of these articles were titled with the superlatives of this is the best RPG yeah, it's ever like, made. Please. Jason was also kind enough to lend us an audio clip. It's a journey that is simultaneously grandiose and intimate, somehow juggling both sweeping political machinations and close personal friendships without missing a beat. There's a villain, Luca Blight, who ranks among the most terrifying creatures to ever appear in a video game. The characters are lovely, the story can be heartbreaking, it looks great, it sounds great, the combat is really satisfying, there's a cooking minigame, there are flying squirrels, there's friendship and betrayal and love and death, and also you get to run your own castle. Although I will say I have been replaying Suicode Into for Triple Click, my podcast, and uh, some, some things about it have not aged well, such as some of the recruitment uh, issues. Um, some some tedious having to run back and forth on the same uh, maps over and over again, such as the kind of infamous Green Hill Forest, which I think you have to cross between five or six times to finish the game, and a couple other things that uh, you can listen to us talk about on Triple Click. But uh, Suikoden 2, despite some of these flaws, will always be near and dear to my heart. That was great. Thank you, Jason, for that. Buy Jason's books, listen to his podcast, etc. Yes, I read both Press Reset and Blood, Sweat, and Pixels through my local library. I'm a loser, and I've only read one of those, but I will read the other one with some someday. Chris, finally, how are we playing this game in 2022? Well, Eric, piracy. Well, no, I own the game. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I am play, I, <laughs> I'm playing the, I'm using the disc image that I own to, did you uh, actually rip your own disc? No, Eric. Allegedly I parody. I did not. I did a couple. I did do something to the disc image, though. I patched my disc image with the Suicoden 2 patcher 
application thing that you can find at soikosource.com, which can help resolve a plethora of bugs that this game has. Uh, that I've all I've, and I've always wanted to play the game like this with all these bugs patched out, and now I am finally going to uh, treat myself to to such an experience. And what is your emulator of choice? My emulator of choice is the Duck Station, which is the it's a personal computer program. Yes, yes, it's 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 very good and, and nice and light and easy to use. Speaking of the of the bugs, I don't want to go into a complete listing of the bugs because many of them reference characters and situations that we have not yet been to or been in but there are uh there's a couple of, of glitches with the soy code in one data carrying over in terms of how those uh how the names and places get get translated over and also there is just flat out fucking missing music in a couple of places great uh, including during the ending so this is supposed to, re- to repair that i have not played far enough to see how if this uh how much it's uh, it's affected it, but we'll see along the way. Well, through the power of science, I am playing the original disc image file so we can compare notes and stuff. I'm using an original, it's called a Sony PlayStation through the X-Station optical drive emulator. I'll be using HD retrovision component cables to a 32-inch Sony Trinitron. I also use a Brook DualSense controller adapter for a wireless controller and a memory card pro. Make your PlayStation the best it can be. Yes, <laughs> Eric has done so. And speaking of you playing this game, this is your first time playing this game, correct? Yes, this is my first time. That was my first time playing the original Soy Code, and this is my first time playing Soy Code 2. It is kind of a, a missing spot in my PlayStation RPG history. Yes. I have expectations. There yeah. is a quality of late generation PlayStation software that makes games from the first generation, like made in 95 or 96, feel ancient by comparison. A greater familiarity with the hardware, better SDKs, and lessons learned over the course of that hardware generation usually lead to a later generation product feeling more polished and more efficient. Compare Final Fantasy VII to Final Fantasy IX, the original Twisted Metal to Rogue Trip, Crash Bandicoot to Crash Bandicoot Warped, just to see how far a game can come in a single generation from the same developer. When I play Code in 2, I want to feel the lessons learned on the technical side, of course, but I also want to sense an evolution in the way it can tell its story. The same story essentially is fine. I think it's still based off water margin, but I still want it to have a level of maturity that the original only achieved in its finest moments. Also, Soy Code 2 is a big one for Chris, and I want to like it for myself, but also for Chris. Oh, thanks! Also for our listeners to make an entertaining show. That's nice. Uh, if you refer back to the, the first episode of, of this season, uh, you'll, you'll hear how much I enjoyed playing Soy Code 1 and how much of an impact that had on me. But I want to relay one thing about that experience that I've n- neglected to, to tell you. The original Soy Code experience. Uh, well, just the total Soy Code experience. When Sweet Code and 2 came out, I didn't know that it existed. Like, I was not reading a lot of gaming magazines at the time, and I guess not going to a lot of websites, but I just, the marketing just passed me over. I did not know it was there. And that's pretty messed up, man. I'm, and how old was I when I have to ask Eric Math? Uh, how old you were was 17. I? I was 17. So I had a, I, I guess I could probably drive, and I had, I think I had, a, I had a, like a part time job. So I had some expendable income. Did you, did you ever go to like Target? To just buy a game. Like, target is where I bought Xenogears. The copy of Xenogears that I gave you, that's my Target copy from Xenogears. Yeah, so did you did you go to Target to say, I'm going to buy a game, but not a specific game? Just like, I'm going to go... Oh, pick- no, I always had a game in my... Like, I was heavy on the rental, and then I would just buy the ones that I kept renting all the time with my grass-cutting money. I did. I, I went to the store with $50 or whatever in my pocket and said, I'm going to buy the, a video game. And sometimes you would go to Target uh, with the intention of buying Bushido Blade and then come home with um, Versus Rampage World Tour. Oh boy. Which was an okay game, but not Bushido Blade, no. right? So I had to I like that game, but I had to know. save my save back up and go back up there in a couple of a uh, couple of weeks to get it. But in this case, I, I went there to just see what they had and I saw Sweet Code in two and I was like, hey, I like that first game. I'm going to purchase it and I bought it. I mean, as an RPG adult child, I'm surprised you didn't know about Sweet Code in two. I mean, were you playing like everything at this point? Like you'd, you mentioned Vandal Hearts earlier. That's kind yeah. of low key. Had you played Vandal Hearts at this point? Like, that's I don't know which a... one I played first. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Was this also the summer of Lunar for you? It must have been. I had played the Lunar demo like before the game came out, the one that they gave, gave away at GameStop. Right. So... Uh, yeah, I, I had played it, but imagine like I know you've played in, in this game a, l- a little bit, but like, I, I didn't even know that it was it was connected to the yeah, first and that game. It t- it, it, I, I feel like games accepting your game data and using it in new and interesting ways was still a novelty, even though Konami's Metal Gear obviously yeah. did that too. Yeah, so I was I was absolutely flabbergasted just to see some of the characters return. It was a tremendous experience. I mean, if you're raised on Final Fantasy where there is no continuous story, and then there's just obscure references laced throughout it, if you because 
some characters from Suikoden show up pretty early in this game. And yeah. If you see them, you're like, oh, shit! That was, yeah, my reactions to that was something special. I'll, I'll never forget that. Anything else? Any other expectations? History? No, that's all I've got, Eric. I'm ready to start dissecting this game and removing the beef. One more thing. If you are familiar with our podcast, we kind of find strange things to count and keep track of in this game. With Chrono Cross, we did toilets. Yes. Parasite Eve, we did ashtrays. Final Fantasy A, we did chicken wuss counter. And last time we did the Invisible Hand of Destiny when we thought we had a choice but didn't. What are we doing this time, Chris? We have the War Crimes Count presented by Shy Guy 32 Yes. Well, I think it's the member of the Real Nut who suggested that. But we are going to count the war crimes in this game and uh, have fun with it. I don't know what the exact definition of a war crime is, but we will have to discuss that as, as things occur. I think it's what we feel a war crime is. I mean, I'm sure we can actually look that up and decide what's a war. Basically, any, anything the United States does abroad should be a war crime, right? Do we just want to measure yeah. it by that? Yeah, like, I think... What are we doing to people? The How about the war crime vibe count? <laughs> okay, there you go. Vibe count. <laughs> yeah. Potential war crime. Yeah. yeah uh, I like vibe makes it a little bit more loose. I like yeah. that. So we call them two war crimes. Zero. And before we get going, let's kick it off with a quote from Yoshitaka Murayama. We referenced this interview in our episode on Suikoden. It was from a Swedish gaming magazine called Level, issue f- number 41, uh, where Murayama was talking about his involvement with Suikoden. And I pulled this quote because I think it lends itself well to how this game came to be. Quote, We noticed that players really loved the world and the characters we had created. All the letters we got, all the response were about the story and the world it took place in. People got immersed in our universe and were spellbound by the characters we filled it with. Once we realized that we could only afford to either develop better graphics or develop the Suikoden world more, the choice was obvious. We chose the world. We speculated that like they knew that Final Fantasy VIII was on, on the horizon, which is he explicitly oh, says yeah. here, and they knew that they, at, this, at this point in time they weren't going to be able to compete with that, so they went in a different direction. It did beat Final Fantasy on in Japan and America. Yeah. North America. And I, I sort of have a hunch that like Suikoden's transition from 2D to 3D with, and Suikoden 3 kind of killed killed it a little bit because it, it, it didn't reach the standards of, of what was, was, was already out there, but that's just a hunch. The development of the world also led to the creation of the Suiko Gaiden games, which are just... Way, as like a narrative overflow? Yeah, yeah, just as a, as a way to uh, embellish the world. I don't know if they were originally planned as new games when this was written, or if it was just like, like you said, just pages of the, of the script that were thrown that had to be cut. But uh, we will be covering those games later in this series on patreon.com slash retro AM. So please look forward to it. Well, let's get ready to play this game, Chris. We hit the power button. What's the first thing you hear? Oh, God. I, the, I turn the, I click the, uh, I open up my duck station and I try to run the patched ROM, I mean, patched disk image, and I hope that it works. And it works, Eric. And I hear the PlayStation sound. I was going to say, does Duck Station make its own sound or it just loads nope. right into... That's why I love it. It's so minimal. If you're playing on a PSP, it makes this sound. A PS2, it makes this sound. Uh, I guess you can play it on a PS3, which sounds like this. Yeah. Shit. Konami logo is the first thing you see. Is this... Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is th- this is not the Konami logo that emerges from the rocks? No, this is something different. Okay, I don't good. think it has an audible noise. If it does, it's already been cut in. Next, music. Opening plays, and we get a stop motion and CG cut scene. Yes. Stop, mo- stop motion? It's been... Like claymation? Not, not like, like claymation. Fantastic Mr. Fox? But like almost flash. And now, it's not flash, but you can tell it's not like thoroughly animated. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't... It's been a long time since I've described a CG cut scene. I realized that when I was transcribing all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. Flaming smoke shoots across the screen, transitioning into letters that spell Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo Presents. Then it fades, then more flaming smoke spells Genso Suikoden 2, the full name of the game. The camera then swims over traces of ink on parchment paper. I assume these are drawings of runes or family crests or nation state battle flags. Portraits of Ryao? Ryu? Well, let's, ha- let's just have that co- the main character. Portraits of Hiro and Jawi, eyes closed, fade in, then fade out, before the screen is filled with more symbols, culminating in what appears to be a flaming red sword. 
Then the music goes hard, and the point of view transitions to a computer-generated village. It's burning to the ground, and people are escaping on foot. It cuts to a zooming-in shot of a heavily fortified castle. It cuts to a shot of a king's face. Swords and spears rise, presumably being held by legions of soldiers in formation. Then more portraits of characters I do not yet recognize flash over the screen as the camera pans down another legion of soldiers. Eventually, it cuts to a caped soldier, head held down, standing over a sword jammed into the hill of a battlefield littered with bodies, including a crumpled hand in the foreground. The sun is setting in the background, rendering the scene majestic as fuck. (laughs) It zooms in on the figure's head, and then his expression changes. His eyes open wide and his mouth screams. He's not mourning the carnage, he's responsible for it, and he's absolutely all about this shit. The music fades, and the camera returns to that burning village. The wailing vocals swell as fire slowly consumes the wooden structures. Among the piles of bricks and wreckage is a green tree sapling, gently blowing in the wind. The camera zooms in on the young plant and the dew glistens. A drop rolls off, turns purple, then explodes into light. Suddenly we're looking up at the sun in the bright blue sky. The hero character looks up, optimistic. Then we're playing as a flower petal from the game Flower, soaring throughout the sky over an open field. More character portraits roll by. The camera settles on the facade of a castle, panning up to look at one of its towers. Birds fly overhead, flapping their wings. It then cuts to a bunch of figures huddled over a map. Papers are rolled up in their hands, and they're all arguing. It cuts to a bunch of men and women at the side of the sea, linen and cloth blowing in the wind on drawing lines. Then it cuts to a bar, with three friends at a table laughing over drinks. Then it cuts to a new legion of soldiers, then a transparency of a blue flag blowing in the wind as it takes over the screen. A new symbol appears on the flag, and then a few dozen character portraits cycle in and out of the screen. At some point, two people kick each other and the screen explodes, then characters start to become featured on cards? It then lingers on a shot of a black-haired, Sephiroth-looking man sitting against a bookshelf, stroking his chin. Finally, we return to the massive green field and the twinkling balls of light start racing across the screen. Blue, orange, and red. They race across a huge body of water before the blue and red ones drop off. Orange remains, and it enters the tower of that castle from earlier. It then explodes into some kind of symbol that I do not yet recognize, but I assume I will become intimately familiar with before the end of my time with Suikoden 2. Title screen. Suikoden 2, 1996. 1999, Konami, all rights reserved. Press start. Chris, is that a hell of an opening? It is a great opening. What did you, did you, did you see any recognizable characters in there at all? There no. are, there are at least two that you, or no, there are at least three in there from Sweet Code and One. They've been redrawn might, enough yeah. to where I don't recognize them in like the half second they were on the screen. Yeah. Same press start noise. We get some options. New game, continue. It's a new game, Chris. It's got to be a new game. Brand new game. We're here for a new game. The familiar name entry plays as we select the default name for our hero. Yes. What is the default name of our hero, Eric? R-I-O-U? Yes. I, so I put the Japanese characters into the Japanese fake net uh, on my own personal time. Yes. And it to me, and it sounds... Illegal fake net. Yes. And it sounds like uh, like Ryu from Street Fighter. But that is also... But that is also open to interpretation based on who you're friends with. Yes. Uh, well, Ryu, Ryu, that, Ryu, Ru. The uh, the exact it's pronounced Ryu. Like that's how Ryu. you pronounce. That. So we're going with Ryu. No, no, no. That that's how Ryu from God Street Fighter is pronounced. Damn it. Okay. I don't know how we're pr- pronouncing this guy yet. God damn I've it. always said, and, and I didn't, of course, know the the canonical novelization name. We will be judged by this. I just want to let you know. Yeah, I know. And what do people say? I, I to me, it looks like Rio, 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 Rio. Like the Brazilian. Yes, like okay. Rio de Janeiro. Okay. But it also could be. Ryu, or Riau, Rio, Riau. What do you think? How have you been saying it in your head? Or does your head talk to you? I've been saying Riau, but I've already forgotten what you said. The correct Rio. Don't look at the fucking real net. You you do, you do not seek validation here. Follow your heart. Rio, Rio, Rio. We're gonna go with Rio. That's my, my, that, that's the kistis that we're selecting right my now. My head says Rio, Rio. Okay. Well, I like your head. So let's go with what your head says. Okay. In your heart. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So we named him that. And we and we. Uh, I almost fucked up and called him Riot, because it's right. one the T is one letter yeah. off from you. Well, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll he'll call some riots at some point in time in the, during the course of this game. When you accept, isn't it? It doesn't this game have Dude, a uh, determine. It says determine. Chris, yeah. I hope I get to determine more shit in this game. <laughs> yes, you determine your name, and that that's about it. Your when it says determine, sealed. I'm like instantly I know the localization might be fucked. Yeah, that it says determine and not something else. It's it, there's a lot of there's a lot of D's in the game. <laughs> 
And then asks an important question. Well, he but before he does that, he, oh. he flips his Tonfa. You know what Tonfa is, by the way? Yes, F Farmed uses them in Virtual On, and then Red Eye uses them in Last Bronx. Their weapons, Chris. I didn't know about Last Bronx until you, we did the quiz show on it's Patreon. It's a great game. Yeah. So, anyway. But yes, he, he spins those and does a little... It's almost the same sound as the Tyr McDowell attack sound. And then he, he clenches them, and we see his uh, beautiful red tunic, yellow scarf, and his circlet. Fully clenched. Yes. So now we're prompted to, to do something, right? Do you want to load save data from the first Suikoden? I do, Eric. But I, I need to make sure that I saved at the final save point in Greg Minster Palace in order to do so. That's the only save point it'll accept, or that's just the last point in the game? Only one, yeah. Otherwise, it will say, it says something really fucked up with you. Um, it says, this save data is no good. No good. Can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> it's no good. Please, or please try one that's good. It's, it's no. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> it's something adjacent to that. I don't think it's exactly it's no good because that's kind of a, a running gag on it. What's podcast. funny is I'm using a memory card pro, which when you load it with X Station, creates uh, like 16 memory cards for one game for you. Mm-hmm. So it's hard when one game's in, it auto selects them. I, I had to like copy the save to a regular memory card, then copy that to the different card. It was hard to like access my sweet code in one save data with that other game in there. Yeah, you had to. It's hard to move data from one place to another without the internet. Yeah. Did you have a tough time with that in Duck Station or is saves managed fairly easily? Uh, no, it was managing it was managing them all in the same directory, or actually the same virtual memory card. Okay, it's, so it you can, creates it, virtual memory card just like the PS3? There's an option to create a new one per game or to create a shared one. I see. So it works like that. Cool. I do, and who I assume is Rio does a nunchuck swirl. Nope. It Tonfa. Asks, you're right, Tonfa. I, I thought it was a nunchuck at the time. I know, I, it's I didn't okay. Know it was Tonfa. It's okay, it's your first time. Ask me about, okay, I copy my save. It says tier 71, 39, 21, level 60. I do, and it loads the game. Finally, Chris, the game opens. Yes, with crickets. We're at Tenzin Pass. We are? Okay. That's what it said. Oh, I must have missed that. A brief time of peace. Yes, there's crickets. The camera opens, panning down what I assume is a war camp. It's in the middle of the night. Water is audibly flowing in the background, and the bugs are fucking out. They are. So I guess it's summer. Yep. It cuts to a circle-eyed view inside one of the tents, like almost like a like a peephole-looking thing, like you're spying on some people. Yeah, and it's a as, camera flourish. as it approaches the tent, it's uh, it, it's Jowie we're seeing. Jowie is the character that's walking down through the camp, mm-hmm. and there are like three. I think there's three soldiers that are all doing something. They're not just standing there like a like a flat sprite. Yep. One of them is like polishing his sword. The other one is kind of just they're out here doing shit. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice looking. It it, it communicates a lot in just like a couple of seconds. One person sleeping face down, one is sleeping on their side with their eyes open. Two figures are standing at each end. One speaks. The first one is Jowie, a portrait character and promising young woman with her hair pulled back. So if you remember our Soy Coden series, yeah. I misgendered both Gremio and Cleo because I read them as both female and male respectively. Yeah. And you've done it again? For about the first hour here, I'm going to be, I think I corrected most of my notes, but I wanted to keep that one pure. I, yeah. I thought Jowie read female. Hey, Sui Coden is non-binary, I of think. Course, yeah, sure. Like, just the game itself. Read what you wanted to. Yes, it. yes. I think Jowie is referred to later with male pronouns. Says the first, Jowie says the first lines of the game, Rio, you changed already? You're sure in a hurry. I, yep. who am Rio, yes. take a step forward. So does Jowie, and we have a chat a bit closer. Jowie continues, oh, me too. I thought about going back to Kiaro, and I couldn't wait to get out of that uniform. Jowie, who the Google document refuses to stop autocorrecting to Joey, looks to his side, lowers his head, and then closes his eyes and says, hey, Rio, Nanami is probably waiting for you to come back, huh? Nanami? Is that how we're saying it? Nanami? K- Nanami. I like Nanami. 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 Yeah. Konami? Nomine? Konami. And immediately I'm like, oh, shit, Chris, is this unrequited love? Like, I thought this was like, Jowie be like, oh, you've probably got Nanami back home. Oh, uh, your girlfriend. You yes. thought it was a girlfriend situation. I thought this was like, yeah. I'm out here on the battlefield with my, with my, my work girlfriend, but yeah. my home girlfriend is back at home. But it's neither of these things. Yes. Who's Nanami? Nanami. Well, Jowie Kanami. answers that question for you after you press the button. He says, you're her only family since Master Ginkaku died. But I could be married. My wife is my family. Yeah, but you're a boy. I don't you, know that. You don't. <laughs> We're at war. <laughs> Who knows? Kids get married I, at 16 all the fucking time. That's true. Uh, if not for this war, uh, N- Nanami is Ryo's sister. Yes. I'm not sure if she's older or younger, but we'll find out when we get the ages later. But then Jowie raises his head and snaps out of it, saying, so anyway, should we go to sleep soon, or do you want to get some fresh air? Looks like yeah. a nice night. We get a choice. Let's go outside, or I'm going to sleep. Chris, this is retrograde amnesia. Let's go outside and look around. Yeah, we do everything. We do that, and Jowie joins the party. No party joining noise. That noise is in the game, but it does not it is not used uh, quite yet. Uh, but we can press a button and check our stats screen. Yeah, right? it's presented to the player immediately. 
Strength, tech, magic, speed, experience, prot, mdef, and luck. These are all things we now have to contend with when viewing our characters. Prot. What do you think prot is, Eric? Protection. Good job. You got it. Ding. Great. Uh, you, you can look at Jawi's weapon. He's, he's equipped with the star staff. Hell yeah. And uh, I don't know what our character weapon is called. I forgot to write it down. I remain in that tent, and I speak to the away guy in bed. He says, this is the youth brigade soldier. That's his name. Yeah. He says, I don't believe in the peace agreement with the city-state, and I'm ready to defend the kingdom with my very life. So instantly we're told, it's time of peace, Chris. Yes. Right now. The sleeping guy then wakes up and says, I'm happy there's a peace treaty. War is a terrible thing. I just want to go home. That's me, Chris. I just want to go home if I'm at war. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm glad the peace treaty exists. Yeah, I'm glad it's happening for us. And right off the bat, I'm glad we're acknowledging that war is not glorious. Mm -hmm. And if you speak to either one of them again, they will say, you think so too, don't you? I like assuming that they agree with you because they're having opposing points of view. Yeah. One likes to fight, fears nothing. One fears everything, hates to fight. Wants to go home. I step outside that camp and so Koden Tzu instantly feels like it was made three years in the future. Yeah, but three years is a lot of years in the terms of the way this game has advanced visually. Yeah. Rayo exits the doorway, and the light coming off the tent is orange and flickering, Chris. We've got flickering lights that never happened in the original Suikoden. Yeah, this is not like the bullshit Uber flames. No. <laughs> the drag and drop uh, key art. They, they, I think all they were doing with Uber's flames were they had a pixel art of a flame, and they just kept flipping it over and yes, over again, like, and right. like it was fucking paint. Uber's flames is my hardcore Suikoden cover band. <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be. Oh, let's go, we'll go talk to some some kids, some yeah, there's soldiers. Soldiers in blue are milling about the camp. Let's go speak to them. Yeah, the first one I talked to tells me that the captain will, will be mad if he sees that I have changed. I, 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 I've I'd, changed. I have changed, Eric. I know. I'm 40 now. I've changed. Chris is, I want to point that out. Only Chris is 40. I'm not 40 yet. Yeah. I'm still 38. Uh, but I think what he means is change clothes, which is our excuse to get into our main character yes, outfits. Yes, our main character outfits to differentiate us from the other main characters. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I'm like, yo, dude, I'm the main character. Sorry, I got to do this. But I think it's, it's funny they acknowledge that. Yeah, oh yeah, like it's it comes great. up again as well. That's yeah. pretty, it's like, of course we're not wearing standard outfit. We never get a reason why either. Yeah. Chris, I pressed the circle button and you, do you know what happened? Oh, you can run, Eric. You can run in this yeah. game by default. And it, there's a little like dust marks yes, behind you. Yes, there's a dust cloud behind you. What a treat, Chris. What a visual flourish that they're acknowledging that I'm pressing a run button in this game without having to equip a fucking Yeah, room. yeah. It's great. Oh, a guy in the middle of the screen is sitting by a smoldering campfire and appears to be sharpening a sword. Yeah, we saw him. He says, Rio, Jowie, listen to this. It was my turn on watch tonight, but the captain said, forget it. It's the peace agreement, I guess. Yeah. So that is suspicious now in light of what happens later. The captain said, hey, man, take the night off. Yeah, we're good. Go ahead. There, 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 there's a peace treaty being signed by the city state. Whenever, by the way, we've heard of the city state, haven't we? In yeah, and it's one. saying city, city state dash. It's not saying which one it is. It just says the city state. So it's like a shorthand already. Yes, yes. Also, anytime that your boss comes to you and says, hey, man, why don't you take the rest of the day off? Mm-hmm. Something is up. Something is fucked. Or they're just fucking with you. Well... I know my boss has been that smart. I mean, like, you, you do something, you, you have a major contribution, like, oh, good job, Eric, you take the That's rest me. of the day off. Yeah. Knowing that you've still got four more hours to work. Yeah, also, you're hour, hourly, and we're not going to pay you for those hours. Yeah. Just get the fuck out of here, we're cutting. Yeah. Anyway. Youth Brigade soldier up top says he's bushed and thinks he'll hit the hay soon. Is that is that a colloquialism? I think bushed? I've heard bush before. Okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an old expression, but it, it checks out. Is that like when people in the UK say they're pissed? I drunk. think that means drunk. Yeah, yes. I don't think he's. Bu- I think he's just tired. Bush is really stoned. Take the piss. I'm bush, I am man. Pissed. I smoked the whole bush. Yeah, Gavin's talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Another one says, "Go to sleep, or the captain will get mad." Chris, is the captain my father? I mean, my dad. Serious question. Uh, he's not. But okay. Okay. Why? What? Why did you think that? Because Teo he, in the last game, oh, my father, yeah. my dad was the captain. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Are you? A, are you a nobleman? We don't know. The youth brigade soldier off to the right, and it now occurs to me that one is positioned at each end of the camp, standing yep. guard, says, mm-hmm. I'm so excited. It's been over a week since I've been back. I can't wait to see my mom. I then exited, but we're going to go over that a bit later. Let's go in these tents yeah. first. Yeah, I went into the tent to the right of our tent. There are some boys in there that are excited to go home. The other boy gets upset and says that, quote, those aren't the proud words of a Highland soldier from the Unicorn Brigade. So we, le- we learned two things. We learned this thing is called the Unicorn Brigade, and we learned that this guy is like has the squall lane heart mentality of like, yeah. I love my work and I'm proud of it. You shouldn't be bragging about not going to the front line. You yes. should be proud to go to the front line. Yes. He then asked Rio if he's feeling all gushy, like in mommy's arms. Is he asking me that or is he asking the other kid Gushy that? is suspect. I think he's checking with you for validation to see if you need mommy's arms as well. Then the boys get in a fight and steam pops off their head. Yes, what's... steam shoots out of their heads. Great, face to face. They get in a push fight like they're playing ease. There's a third boy in here that understands what's going on and breaks them up. He goes back to sleep. He, then he just like immediately goes back to sleep. And then we get our first 
main character emotes sweat drop coming well, off our top of our head. Do you know what's uh, what's, what's important here, Chris? Uh, Got to hear both sides. Yeah, both sides case didn't play, but we did hear both sides of, of what it's like to be in the Unicorn Brigade. Mm. And uh, sounds great, I both guess. Both boys then spit angry dots yes. to try to speak to them again. Did you explore around before you went to the captain's Oh, like out into the forest? Yeah. Is there anything out there? I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, and I didn't know. I didn't even realize you could go out there. There's some fucked up. There's, well, we'll get to it. Okay. I exit right and find a youth brigade soldier guarding a cave. He's on sentry duty. and doesn't know who needs a sentry this deep in the mountains. Mm-hmm. There's another youth brigade soldier on the other side of the cave, and he says, Hey, Rio, when we get back to Chiaro, me and your sister are going to, uh, <laughs> I'll forget about it. And then he gets that, like, stymied speech effect over his head. Chris, he's going to fuck my sister. What's, yeah, I know. What's the stymied speech thing above his head? Like the squiggles and shit, like the embarrassing oh, thing. Oh, gotcha. Okay, like yeah. He, I, 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 I don't have a sister, but it's my kind of estimation that if you're friends with somebody, you shouldn't tell your buddy that you're about to do relations with his sister. No, I don't think you should say this that really is, probably bad. about anybody. They I don't know, think really. so. It's weird. God Take damn, yourself. I keep going to the right. A youth brigade soldier out here says something feels weird. I could have sworn I saw something move before. Oh, foreshadowing. I keep going east. The camera at some point stops and pans over and reveals a shadowy figure under a tree. Fuck. Honestly, it looks like Sneff. <laughs> but my immediate question, based on what Chris told me, Chris, is this Uber? No, it's not Uber. Okay. I mean, I mean, I've never seen that before, so maybe it is Uber. This person is credited as question marks, and they say, hey, and then they run away. Oh, I bet it's just... I, I thought this is like some great foreshadowing thing. No, I didn't even know that existed, Eric. I did not I'm know discovering you... shit about Code 2. You don't even even. I played this game like about four yet. or five times, and I don't even... Yeah, My wow. boy doesn't explore even for a podcast. Look at that shit. I chase this person, but Jowie steps out and scolds me for doing this, saying it will make Captain Roud mad again. Jowie also says not to worry. We're going back to Kiaro Town tomorrow. You know what, Eric? It's most likely a soldier from the, the event that's about to occur, but guess what? what? In, in my, my life, my canon, it's Uber. Okay. It's Uber. We just made it Uber. Yeah, it's we Uber. We make the rules here. Sorry. It's good. I said to you as Uber, like in Memento, when he's like, is this, is that John G, honey? Oh. Is that who that was? Yeah. No. Yeah. Finally, I go into the upper right tent, mm-hmm. Captain Raub's tent. Did you go yes, in there? Yes. I went in the captain's tent and said, oops. Then we see Roud, who is a standard-looking portrait man with the complicated armor, I He's think. got a well-dressed sprite. Yeah, the armor is, is really nice-looking. He exclaims, asking us where our goddamn uniforms are. Jowie panics. Yes. Roud steps forward and says that he'll forget it this time and tells us to get back and go to sleep. Joey, sir, yes, sir, is him. Yes. Jowie, Joey? I've always said Jowie. I Jowie. think there's some conversation that, that maybe it was it should, uh, a better uh, romanization of, of everything would have been Joey, but... It looks like Jowie to me. Fuck it. City state of Jowieston. <laughs> Sorry. I leave north, making my way through the woods. I reach a grassy cliffside and find a peaceful waterfall in the distance. I set my controller down and go make dinner and let them watch the waterfall in the middle of the night. Oh, I'm glad they got to have that moment together. Then I'm back to my tent. I tell Jowie I'm going to sleep. Jowie says he wants to go back to Kiaro at the first light anyway. Good night, Rio. Yes, don't forget. We're from Kiaro. We both get in bed side by side. Yeah. In separate beds. Then we get something that we never got in Soycoden. One, as far as I remember. What do we get? Fighting sounds. Hell yeah. They are audible. It's screaming and some steel on steel action. It looks yeah. like we're being attacked. God, the, the steel's rubbing. It's pretty good. Youth Brigade Soldier says, surprise attack. Then the fucking sublime enemy attack music plays. Yes, it, <laughs> it, it, it pounds. It's pretty good. I was wearing these fucking giant headphones yeah. when I was playing, and I was like, wow, this thing is really getting me... Th- getting a feeling in the body rock out my heart is pumping joey says it's a surprise attack and wonders what happened to the peace treaty with the city state joey thinks we better go check it out i think so too chris you know what happens to me every time there's a surprise attack i can't believe that shit oh yeah and i think that's what's happening here yeah uh there's peace chris yeah we go outside though eric and there's fire real fire not that uber fire yes good losing fire the playstation can do transparencies chris yes saturn can't it looks really great yeah sorry about your luck saturn well it kind of it's a long story yeah well it's it's a mesh you can explain it to me in a special bonus podcast okay Joey thinks we better check this shit out yeah route calls for us actually it looks way better than the mansion that got burned down in rockland (laughs) oh yeah victor's flames were also bad uh, Raud tells us that the city-state has broken the peace agreement. Those scum. 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 Three exclamation points. Chris, is it a war crime to break a peace agreement? Uh, breaking a peace treaty, it has to be a war crime, right? Like, there I are... Think so. Like, that's a convention. Yeah. Determined upon at, you know, at Geneva. Okay, yeah, I agree. Probably. Uh, play the sound effect I haven't invented yet. Okay. So I them to... One. Wow, Eric, you really outdid yourself on that one. I hope so, Chris. 
Yeah, he said we're surrounded and we need to take to the mountain path to the east. Hurry. Mountain, the, yeah. It, it, it's oddly specific, and Raud's gotten to some conclusions that are uh, pretty advanced for this surprise attack in the middle of the night, Chris. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, had the, who knows who it is? Raud runs off, then Jawi says, well, let's run, Rio. We can't die here. Nanami will be all alone. Yes, Nanami and Nanami will both be alone. I head east. The fallen Youth Brigade soldiers are being tended to by other Youth Brigade soldiers. Eric, the children are dying. Taking a knee beside. I didn't know they were children at this point. Yeah. Like, I had no idea that they were all like 15 and 16. I mean, the fact that they were called Unicorn Brigade should have been a tip-off for that one. And the fact they were called Youth Brigade. Yeah. They're begging, don't die on me. Another taking a knee is screaming, why, why, why? And he's got to get away. When you see this thing happening in real life or in, in, in life at all. Yeah, I haven't been to a war zone. The only thing that you would be able to think is like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, gotta get the fuck out of here. We can't be here. I can't, I can't be doing this. Yeah, then we keep running down the mountain path, right? Yes, there's a soldier with his arm over another and they're walking away and he says, oh, it hurts, mommy. He's quivering, Eric. <laughs> this man is quivering, get it? His buddy says, don't worry, I'll save you. We're pals, right? Which is what I would say to you if we were both dying, Chris. Yes, and we were uh, in Europe trying to play Terra Enigma. We're both pals. Let's play pal game. Pal yeah. games. I head to the right to the next screen, immediately see soldiers spring off to the east. I try and follow them, but then Jowie parties out and stops me and we get a choice. Yes. What is it, Jowie? Or let's run away. What'd you do, Chris? Ask him what it is. Yeah, I was like, what's the deal, Jowie? Why are we stopping? We got to follow these fuckers. He saw Uber in the woods. <laughs> he says, don't you think it's strange, Rio? The only way out is through the woods. The enemy must know that too. The enemy might be waiting in the woods to ambush us. Let's go back, Rio. Let's go tell Captain Roud. So I head back. Dude, on my way back, those two soldiers who were like helping each other out, you know, the me and you from three minutes ago. Yeah. They're both keeled over dead. Yeah. One has an arrow in his back. One spits dots and the other just says, ugh. It is. It's pretty graphic. It, it is it's graphic, and it's, it, but it, you know, they're going for it here. Like there's a lot being communicated here without just explicit exposition. There's more dead soldiers on the path. Everyone who was injured on the way here is now dead. They're yeah. asking why. They're begging for help. They're asking for mommy. I go back to camp and the music fades and new music suspicion plays mm -hmm. as the camera pans over to reveal Roud speaking to a blue caped armored soldier with black hair. This is plate armor. Okay, that is plate armor. Big, bulky plate yeah. armor. Yeah. Four soldiers are here too. Yeah, a Roud is talking to this plate armored man. He says, it's just as we planned, Prince Luca. Everyone fled east through the woods. The ambush worked perfectly. Eric, That's it, Chris. We're bushed. It's a setup. Is, we are bushed. We're extremely bushed. Uh, it, so a peace agreement was not broken in that case. War crime erased. But a new war crime was created in its place. All right. Uh, reverse, literally reverse the old one and play the new one. Attacking your own youth brigade is a war crime, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay, so we're... Well, so, I don't know. Is one side fighting itself a war crime? I mean, it's... I don't think it's a war crime, this actually. Is this is... I think it's just a regular crime. It's, yeah, mass murder is a regular crime. Yeah, it's not a... I mean, it is... It, it but, can but, also but it's be being, a war crime. But, but it's being executed by the military, though, so it is a war crime. I don't know that military on military violence is necessarily a war crime. So does that have to be against another state? I think the fake net must are, are, can you be, be, be the arbiter of can where... You, can you perform... Uh, the question is, fake net, can you do a war crime to yourself? Was the rock a war crime? If you're a sovereign nation, can you do a war crime to yourself? Did General Hummel stealing the VX gas, gas and threatening San Francisco with it, was that they killed Michael Bean in the fucking showers? They sure did. Fake net. Initializing fake net. The traditional assumption has been that war crimes against combatants can only be committed against soldiers from the other side of the armed conflict. The reasoning behind this interpretation was that crimes or human rights violations committed against one's own armed forces were a matter for states themselves to deal with under their domestic criminal law or human rights law. Well, that, that clears it up. Thanks. Okay, yeah. Uh, Luca, a portrait character with a permanent villain sneer, says, Ha ha ha, all the poor victims of the state's betrayal, eh? I wish I had joined the ambush. All I've had to fight lately is that old man. I'm getting rusty. Huh. What is, is the old man a specific person? I don't know. Interesting. Maybe. We'll find out. Proud. By the way, I'm shocked about how much this game I've forgotten. Oh, I've good. I've played it so Great. many times. Like, yeah. I had no idea like the direction this game goes this early. Like I remembered it starting in the camp, but everything else is just The beautiful thing about getting old is you've forgotten all the cool shit and you can relive it again. Actually, I love it. that's the one. Retrograde yeah. amnesia. Proud replies quite meekly. Yes. I mean, no. Prince Luca's swordsmanship is truly unmatched. My men would look like fools. Luca then takes a step down and looks into the forest and says, Yes, well, these young men serve their country well enough. Now we don't need a peace treaty with those state weaklings. State is capitalized. I'll prove that they're no match for the power of Highland. 
Highland uh, Town of Beavis and Butthead, right? Yes. Right. Roud says, I agree, sir. With Prince Luca in command, Highland can finally earn the glory it deserves. All that bullshit. The camera pans back up to a shocked Jowy and Rio, with Jowy wondering, what the hell, Chris? Yeah. It cussed. Wow, curse words. Cuss words. Profanity. <laughs> you know what? I had a great moment related to that because I was watching The Mandalorian with my kids, and he at one point said, what the hell? And the kids were like, <sighs> he said a cuss word. Well, Han Solo says hell too. Yeah, I, I guess you're right, but I, I guess it, it, it was a much yeah. quieter, slower moment. Like it was the last line of the of the moment. Anyway, go ahead. What the hell? We get a choice, but I bash buttons and pick the first one first, choosing to escape rather than go talk to the captain. I hope Chris went and talked to the captain. I think I also quickly pressed the button because I don't even have anything about it. Destiny denied. Jowie suggests yes. we go up to that cliff in the north because we'll be killed if we go east. Jowie thinks we might be able to escape if we climb the cliff. I do it. I head north. We get to the edge, but Jowie loses his breath and says, are you okay, Rio? You're not hurt. But why would the captain? And then Raud pops up. Yep. He says, you'll never learn the answer to that. You'll die here, victims of the state's surprise attack. And surprise attack is in like air quotes. Yes. Or literal quotes, actually. Your future ends here. Raud then comes out of the trees with four soldiers. Jowie can't believe this shit, slowly saying the word captain. Like, you know, when you're betrayed by somebody and you're like, captain? Yes. Raud continues, it's too bad. You were two promising soldiers. Now get them. Then our fight music plays, Chris. What's it called? It's called fight music. It's called The Will. It plays. The screen shatters like Xenogears and we're in a battle. Uh, I have something different than The Will. I have The Desire to Triumph. Oh, that's even better than The Will. Yeah. I'm going by names at Zofar's Domain. Chris is going by the names of wherever Uh, with the soundtrack was allegedly parody acquired from. uh, KH Insider. Okay. There's also different tracks. I don't know if they're different than Zofar's Domain, but... There's different track titles than I have on the Suico wiki. Great. Another wonderful season of not knowing what music's called. Yeah, it's going to be great. We can fight, run, bribe, or auto. Yeah, just like uh, old times, Eric, except for free will has been changed to auto. Yes. What is the first thing that struck you about the new old battle system? It's fast. It is faster. Is there anything else that you noticed that was done in terms of upgrades or changes? Not immediately. The characters, the when they're standing idly, are animated. They have two or three frames of like clothes moving, hair blowing, animation. Mortal Kombat there. idle pose. Yeah, and it looks really nice. Yes. One commander and three Highlands, all soldiers. Immediately, I unite for a buddy attack. I love the buddy attack. The buddy attack is basically the the the, the Kai uh, Tier McDoll stick attack, right? Yes. Yes. It, it, it it's like a group attack. We literally run circles around these dudes before spinning our weapons and closing in on their bewildered bodies. Did you notice what happened at the? Um, or when you before you selected the unite, unite attack? No. It's the buddy attack, but it also tells you what it does. Okay, so, so you're case, not just it, flying blind out yeah, there. Yeah, it says like 1x damage to all enemies. After the battle, music suspicion resumes, and Raud comes back with, Damn you, you persistent little punks. Stay there, I'll be right back. And I have trouble believing this captain couldn't just take us, but okay. Yeah. Jowie seems to agree with me, telling Rio we can't keep this up forever. There's no other way. We'll have to jump for it. And then we get a choice. I said, we'll never make it. I said, I guess there's no other way. And from the guide, if you stay in... Did you read about this? No. If you say there's if you, if you say there's no way that we'll make it, Rod will come back with more people and you can just keep fighting and killing oh, them. Oh, you're right, yeah. If you fight 108 of these battles consecutively, the next uh, cutscene later will be in color rather than black and white. Oh, I didn't know that. I know what cutscene is talking about, but yeah. yeah. Wow. I tell Jowie we'll never make it, and he replies, Rio, we've got nowhere to run, and the captain can't leave us alive. Once again, look at the current, and I say we'll never make it. Jowie tells me that I'm not the cowardly type. I triple down, and Jowie says, at this rate, he'll get us for sure. Better make up your mind. Do you want to leave Nanami alone in this world? I quadruple down, and Raud shows up with more guys. I kill them. Raud calls us persistent little punks and tells us to stay there while he goes and gets even more guys. Jowie and I go through the same routine. There's no way this game will... Okay, so I just kept doing that over yeah. and over. But what you're supposed to... Like, jumping off a waterfall, not smart, but there's no way this game's going to kill its two main characters in the first hour. Yes, no, we have no choice. So I tell Jowie there's no other way, and he affirms my decision. Jowie then, like, walks over to a rock or something, and he punches it, or does he carve it into a tree? I think he's taking, like, a knife or a, a piece of flint or something and, yeah. and, and calls... Making a mark. Yes. He says if we, if we make it but get separated, we should return to this spot. He wants Rio to promise this to him, and he actually, like, you see him slash across into it. Yeah. And then you get a choice. I promise or forget it. We'll make it together. I promise him. 
I also promise, I'm a man of my word. Yes, I like oaths. Rio does this shit too, and I thought like for a second they were cutting their hands and doing blood oaths on this thing, but Rio just like that would be cool. Cross the slash. No, they were cross. creating a brotherhood on a rock. That's right. They're completing the X so they can play Zeno Gears. Joey says, "Let's go, Rio." And the yeah. two then approach the side of a cliff, turn their heads to face each other, then leap off together, splashing into the water. You like that head turn? Mm-hmm. It's, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Even the jump animation is specific for this moment. Yes, there are bespoke animations all over the place in this game. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to stop pointing out every single one of no, them. No, man, do it. Do it. Retrograde so amnesia. You got to do it. Well, I made note of it. I, I made note of a lot of them. Very, very, very many. But that's all uh, for this episode. You'll have to listen to our next episode next week to hear more about this video game called Soy Coden 2. Yes, but before we leave, Eric, as we ceremoniously do every time, we must consult the real net. Initializing real net. By the way, we set a new record tonight. The real net is fucking full. Oh, man. Capacity. Which is cool, but also it sucks because somebody was like, I can't get in. How do we, can we fix that? Uh, I, th- the number of users listed in this, in the settings, I checked it earlier, is 99. I had it on infinite and I was like, maybe it's not working. So then I put 99. So I don't know how Discord works. I don't know if there's anything we can do to make it bigger other than stream it somewhere else, but it kind of like just, you know, Keep doing, it on house. doing it locally, yeah. you know what I mean? We'll problem solve that, fix it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But uh, usually the first the first episode of a, of a new game is always a, a packed house anyway. More people like plan for it. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's, it's a, a small crowd. Anyway, let's consult the real net. What we, what we mean here is, is we're going to read the comments. Yes, the real net is what we call the people who listen to us. Um, uh, yeah, a, collect, a collective of patrons. Patrons who listen to us. Record, record, record live, so. Uh, I'm going to see if I'm an uncle real quick. Oh, yeah. Uh, uncle Eric. Uh, the, the episode after you become an uncle, I'm just going to call you Uncle Eric. Dude, um, look up. Chris, tell the real net what my brother is playing while his uh, wife's in. Is he still a patron? I don't know. Eric's brother is playing uh, Xenogears. Uh, he actually took a screenshot of the spoiler uh, from the intro, uh, the, the fetus of the spoiler. He's in the delivery. Okay. That's yeah. hardcore. Yes, I will birth God. Somebody will. I guess. Okay. Well, anyway, Mr. Sly calls the youth brigade the Reagan youth. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. We don't know much about the... Jugend? <laughs> is it? I don't know. Jugend? It seemed, I don't think that the... The Reagan youth is just Jugend? Oh, no. <laughs> Dubert says, Uber's flame is my aim screen name in an alternate universe. Probably mine, too. We're probably the same person in an alternate universe. Oh yeah, Mr. Slack points this out. There's child soldiers. Is that a war crime? I don't. I don't, no, I, I don't, I don't think at the time. No, you no. have to go relative to your. Time. I'm pretty sure like fourteen. Like if the law. Like, yeah. If, uh, yeah. Like I mean, if there was like a, you know a little like an infant piling around, then maybe. But very clearly later, there is like a, an of age you can be to be a soldier in these games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sublime music plays. Assistant Ninja said, "Hey Joey, watch out! I'm rebellion over here." <laughs> <laughs> hey. John Doe says, war itself is the crime. SSD Ninja says, the only moral war crime is my war crime. Yeah, that's, how they, that, that, that's what they say. Psycho Paladin Jr. succession of war crimes. They just stack and become more powerful with time. Yeah. See, Mr. Slack agrees with me. False flag military attack to force political powers to declare war is a war crime. I don't know. Th- the fact that I already solved this, so there's no yeah, point in talking about right. it anymore, but I just want to, oh, that's a good comment. SSD Ninja says that they were crisis actors. <laughs> That's, crisis actors is like my favorite thing I never considered before, but has entered the lexicon as like a dumb guy's argument for anything. Yeah, and, and I like that term, especially because it, it marginalizes no one. Yeah. Togame says there's no English track names because the soundtrack never had official releases outside Japan, if I recall correctly. I imagine that's what usually happens. Or yeah. like stuff gets named on file sharing networks in 99 and then never changed. You know, like System of a Downs, this Legend of Zelda song that isn't System of a Downs, shit like that just becomes essentially like the information of record after enough time. Yeah. We make our own truth, Chris. We do. We have to. John Doe says, I fucking love the way Suicoden uses United Attacks to increase narrative impact of betrayal and character death. Even if you don't give a shit about a character, you're going to miss a good Unite. Yeah, even early on in the game, there's a couple of really good ones. Rival characters united by attacks? Yes. This is like a tagline for a video game. Well, I mean, Suicoden means war, so. It does. That's all we have for the Real Net tonight. Real Net, thank you for joining us for a record-breaking evening. 
War crimes are only moral if America gets oil, says Blackie Mars. Oh. <laughs> who I believe is a European. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, sorry about us. This episode is a production of Retrograde Amnesia, recorded on June 21st, 2022. Find us on Twitter at Retro Amnesia Pod, or you can email us on the emails at podcast at retrogradeamnesia.com. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash retroam and get bonus episodes, miniseries, and access to the real net. Thank you, Mark. Shepard. For the music. You're welcome, Chris. By Mark's video game, United Space of America. Free ad. You don't the pay United Space of America. Excuse me. The United Space of America. It's a fun little running gun shooter. Play. I beat that game. Did you beat that game? I beat three levels of the game. I beat that I game. It's a hard game. Yeah, the first three levels, I was like, okay, I'm really feeling it, and I'm going to stop here and pick it back up later, and I'm going to do that. I promise, Mark. Um, until next time, Eric. Yes, we will bring the committers of war crimes to ultimate justice. And count them all. And now you may go back to sleep. Do you know if there's a bath in this game or not yet? I don't. Okay. I've, I've looked up, I'm trying to not even look at track titles because they contain spoilers last time. Yeah, yeah, they do. There's not quite as bad, but... The doctor's going to come out and then I can go... Yeah, ahead. angle that a little bit towards you. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I had kids, I was like, fucking people, please stop showing up. I need, like, there's five minutes here for me to close my eyes. Please stop. I mean, it's, I showed up. You I was did? there. Yeah, like two days afterward, maybe? That's the customary thing to do. Your friend produces a child. You go visit them in the hospital and bring them a cookie and a fucking I, nacho cheese. I, I know, I know, but I was not. See, my I, my kids were born just after midnight, so I lost a whole night of sleep. I wasn't there until at least two days afterward. And that I don't think I recovered for, let's say, two and a half years. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> maybe longer. Like it took a lot out of me missing a whole night of sleep and then having and not knowing how to change a. I mean, I knew how to change a diaper, but once you actually have to change a diaper. Touching your son's asshole while black goo comes out of it? Yeah, I don't have to, it's so great I don't have to touch butts all the time anymore. I can wipe their own asses. It's great. You never paid the sleep debt. No, I didn't. Uh, okay, talking to the microphone real quick and make sure we got a good sound going. Hey, Chris. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going good. How are you? Pretty good. I joined a gym recently because I stopped playing ring fit and I, I leveled it up. You leveled and up the gym? Yeah, like I, I decided to take it seriously um, and join myself as opposed to just go with my wife under under her name. And I go about two o'clock in the afternoon, which is when there's old men and almost nobody else there. Yeah. And there's an old guy there. He got to be in his seventies or eighties and he looks like my grandpa and I've developed like a fondness for what, him. Is he, is he naked? No, no, no. There's, this is, this is out like using the machines and shit. Gotcha. And I was using the seated rowing machine and I got off it and it's customary at the gym now, maybe forever, I don't know, to uh, get paper towels and, and sanitizer and sanitize the shit you just use in case you left like sweat marks or COVID particles all over it. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been to a gym, but I, I remember that process. So I went to go get the sanitizer shit and I'm coming back with the wet rag and the old guy who looks like my grandpa is sitting on the rowing machine I was just on and I was like, oh, fuck, man. He's got your, uh, your DNA. My stink all over me. I'm like, sir, uh, you mind if I clean this? And he's like, no, 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 no. I, I don't get anything. Uh, I, uh, I've been taking the hydro, hydrochloroquine and I've never gotten COVID. I, I'm not worried about it. I'm not... You're not worried about just my sweat particles? Yeah, and that's what I was like. I was like, okay, um, well, do you, can I still clean that? And then he started going on about how it cured his arthritis and shit. Oh. And he just, he just like, you know, people just love to fucking talk. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm like dude, yeah. please don't ruin it. You look like my grandpa who's dead. No. Please, please yeah, just stop. I have, I have preconceived notions about you and they're all good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like don't, don't fucking tell me you're injecting aquarium fuel or whatever that stuff was <sighs> like into your veins, please, sir. Well... I'm glad your arthritis is better. I wish you well. I wish him well, I guess. Just stay away from me. Uh, okay. Let's check out that sound. Got a lot of roads built. You build, yeah, building roads is satisfying. It is you satisfying. Just drive on that fucking Yeah, I can shit. run on those roads. Oh I just like God. running on the goddamn roads. You get zip lines yet? No. You get to pick your own network. There's no pre predetermined pass. You can make your own, your own truth. Wow. I still know my routes in my head. I can see them. I just, what's the most recent thing I got? I, I think the most recent thing I got was the time file shel shelters. Mm. Yes. Which I built a couple of those. Those are nice. Have you delivered pizzas yet? I skipped the pizza delivery mission. Do it. Have you, has it already expired? I don't know. Do the pizza. I know they suck. Do the pizza delivery missions. Please. Okay. That's, that's the only side shit I'm going to say you have to do. Please God. They're annoying as hell. Do the delivery missions, please. It there's pays a, off. It fucking pays off. There's an element of this where I want to get through the game. You I know. know. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Um, so to, I'm not doing, I'm not doing everything, but I am doing like the things that I, I would feel consider like these story essential. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yep. All right, let's fucking do this. I'm so happy.